All right, what's up, boys, boys, and girls? Again, episode two or game two of the reaction slash analysis. Game one was insane, and right, uh, yeah, um, three Venus bands. <laughs> yeah, 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 three Venus bands instantly here, right after that game. One hundred percent. I agree, Omega. I agree. Um, Blacklist go for the Fanny, Ryzen, uh, Masha, Valentina. All right. They go for one, one first pick. Oh, wow. Wow. One, one, Beatrix. Skill matchup in lane. This one's a skill matchup. The last one was a losing matchup, and Kelro won the Claude. So, yeah. Um, then they pick. Wow. Venus went for the Matilda Akai. Because, again, they don't need to go for the Beatrix in the first first pick here, because obviously the enemy team already has one, one. So they just they go for two prior picks first here. Matilda, signature pick, and uh, the Akai. This is interesting. Selena Grok combo. We've seen it many times. It's very high risk, high reward. If the Selena can pop off, hit Abyssal Arrows early on, then it's GG. They're gonna they're gonna snowball the game, especially with one one. If you get oh, if the Selena just roams towards bottom side of uh, towards gold lane, um, bullying the Beatrix, it's GG. Like one one's gonna have a great time. Then Blacklist goes for the Paquito. Paquito. All right. Solid choice. They ban Asme, Uranus, Fovius. Ooh, wow. Three. Yeah, okay. Good ban, Fovius. Because Blacklist ban Esme first, right? You got to respond with a Fovius ban. You already have a 1 1. You have a Selena. If you leave that Fovius open with the Esme ban by Blacklist, it's GG. They go for Paquito instead. Julian Jungle and Etumax. Okay. It's, um,. See, it should be Chaknu on the, um, on the Grok and Selena Etumax. Etumax. Etumax? Etumax? I don't know, man. Sorry, man. Di Dyroth. They go for Dyroth against Paquito. Wow. That's interesting. That's very interesting. They're in for Dyroth against a Paquito. Hmm. Hmm. Not to mention a little bit of cleanse. Yeah. That's a lot of CC. They need um mid laner. I mean Haji usually goes for Farsa here. Is that Farsa? Sicilian. Oh yeah. Farsa is a bit too risky. <laughs> now that I'm looking at like Omega's comp, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Farsa is a bit too risky, man. But yeah, Haji just really likes to play those range heroes, yeah. I think uh, me and KB, we we had like a few discussions about MPLPH and we spoke about Haji. He he really likes the long range heroes like the um, Sicilian, Farsa, Yeve. Um, I've, I've never seen him on Lilia. Kagura probably is the one one of the only like go in crazy heroes that he's played. I haven't seen him on. Uh, yeah, he really likes those high ground heroes. So based on the drafts, Sicilian in mid is going is really weak, dude. Uh, like uh, early game, yeah, because the base damage has got nerfed and you're up against. Yeah, Mathilda can help, but the, the Grok and the Selena has insane kill pressure. And they also have really good clear. The Grok has really good clear. Selena doesn't have good clear, but... High risk, high reward for Omega with this comp, man. Um, they picked up Dyroth too. Not? Who's their jungler? I forgot. I forgot. Let me just... Let's jump in! Oh, troubleshooting. I think I, I, I saw one moment during the troubleshooting. Um, it's when Chaknu kissed Kelra. I don't know if we will get that here. Is it game two? Game three? I did. I saw that one on TikTok. All right, it's not, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna get it. Okay, I forgot. Matilda Blacklist jungle wise. Who's the jungler? Julian. Okay. Julian with mystery shop. So wise is gonna have a better start to the jungle. With Demon Slayer on Akai. But yeah. Um, wow. That was, that was solid by Chaknu. Yeah, he's just holding off the waves. Just doesn't want it to... Good. Wants to deny, deny as many stacks as possible. And also, he's um, able to clear it out pretty well. Selena is actually going to be playing around that top side early on. That's interesting. I thought I thought she would just be like playing around bot around the gold lane. 
extra life on the, the buff right there. Right. Man, there's just a whole lot of kill pressure for Omega. Like, take a look at one one Julian Selena Grok Dyroth. This is a. If Omega gets rolling in the early game, you're not going to stop them. You are not. You're. It's. This should be a stomp. Game one, beat, uh, Blacklist one. Game two and three, Omega win. Right. I know the results of the match. So, this should be a stomp by Omega. Should be, because they. This composition, if they, if Omega fall behind with this composition, it's tough. It's very tough. Okay, it's Etu Max, not Etu Max. Nice play. Nice play by Wise. Good pick off again. It's oh. Oh, let's see what. How did he set that up? He just clears the top side. Okay, so there's there's probably one there's probably something that he's doing here again to set this up, because there's no way Edward doesn't communicate that the Dyroth is missing, right? Unless he blanks out, which is very. I don't think I don't think that's the case here. I think the Dyroth has been playing mainly in lane and mainly in the bushes. He's been popping back and forth in the bushes, and he's been playing in the bushes to actually hop onto Edward to dish out the damage, right? And because of that, maybe Edward thinks, oh, he's clearing it up to just hide in the bush again, put into pressure. He doesn't tell the team, Renzio here, able to jump on Venus. Maybe, right? Again, it's an assumption. Or it could just be a mistake. It could just be like Edward forgot. It's all about timing, though. Omega, get that kill right as the turtle spawn. So Omega have pressure for this turtle fight and I don't know this feels a bit forced by blacklist yeah Chaknu as well very good zoning very good zoning use this ult used everything in his arsenal just to try to stop them from getting to the turtle very good turtle take by Omega absolutely but then again, Backlist International does have a little bit of an advantage oh. right now. But this is only because oh. uh, Omega's going to go for the double. Mm -hmm. There's the sound effect giving the signal. They find that two max here. And then now, oh. the focus gets knocked up. Knocked up. Oh. 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 Okay. I was, dude, if, if, if Wise escaped that, that would be crazy. Because they kind of stayed a bit too long there. But, wow. Again, it's, it's Renzio who just... Doesn't care about his minions sometimes. He just just rotates. Solid. And like I said, um, gold lane a bit of a matchup, a skill matchup here. Um, in terms of just like dueling, Kelra does have an advantage uh, on the one one. I've been in this matchup many many times. In terms of dueling, but in terms of wave clear and poke, Oheb wins. So it's a battle. It's a skill matchup. If Oheb can use that Nibiru pa Nibiru's passion properly with the Renner's shot as well, hit it onto Kelra, he can win. But obviously you need to hit it onto Kelra, a person who's insane. <laughs> and he's on a 1-1 one -one with more outplay potential. GG. Nah, why is that? Oh, wow! I forgot about... I keep forgetting about the Guiding Wind, boys. I thought it was dead. Keep forgetting. I don't know why I keep forgetting about the Guiding Wind. Oh. Okay. Yeah, but that's pretty interesting that Blacklist have the gold lead right now. But ooh. yeah, see, it's very hard. If if Oheb just plays this way, Kelra won't be able to get that advantage, and Beatrix is just gonna keep on scaling, waiting for that item power spike. Once she once the Beatrix gets like a BOD, she can actually go for Wesker Renner, and Wan Wan's gonna have a very hard time. That's This is, this is just, it just shows how useless the um, Sicilian is early on with um, with the stacks denied from him. Oh wait, wait, never mind. It's not useless, but he does deal like very little damage. That was that was still well played though. Holy shit! I keep g I keep jinxing. Last game I said it was GG for Omega. No way. And this game like yeah, no damage from Sicilian. How did they win that? What? And that's what saved the mighty panda and now Blacklist International will hold on. God damn. Unfortunately, <laughs> Grok, the Grok block didn't save them. Because of Good one, but oh wow. 
Edward. Edward. Balboa. Holy. Oh my god. How did Omega win this? They're falling behind. Mm, oh, I've got the BOD. There you go. That's the power spike you were waiting for. You saw how Renzio wanted to go for the kill onto Edward. He had, that does have the angle, but Weiss stays in front of his teammate. He saves yeah. him and then pops the ultimate. Good analysis by my wolf. My, my boy, my boy wolf. Uncle wolf. In this game. There was also a play where they did another flying heavy spin combo, yep. which is so fun to see. Punishing even the setup that was the flying heavy spin Kato combo Chaku is fun to see. His nice liker. Uh, rock block or the guardian's barrier, and now Kelra even dodges the win of the ultimate. My God. Good, good lane swap. Flicker for a wild charge. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You're, you're, you're threatening. Oh, I agree. I agree. So I agree. That was a that's that's a good trade. Yeah, I, I agree too. No, um, wild charge for flicker. Yeah, um, without the team fights, without I mean, without the neutral objectives, they're not really gonna go for any team fights. They're just gonna go for like catches here and there, pokes here and there. They don't need to. It's unnecessary to look for the team fights. Mostly just ganks probably around the map. And they they are already setting up for the bottom side, but Kelra's shoved it in, so Pakus don't really have pressure to go for it. Omega can just open up that side. Yeah, they they deny the gank. They're, they're really just like trying to funnel as much gold as possible to Kelra. If Kelra pops off in this team fight, if she if he is able to target the crossbow tank properly, Haji and Oheb going to get melted. But yeah, the guiding wind can actually bring them out of range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's see. Turtle fight number three. A target, but... Oh, Paquito, Edwards, no, Omega needs to like, Ed, Omega needs to bounce, Omega, well not to bounce, Omega needs to engage right now, very good by Renzio, he doesn't care about that top side, he co goes into the mid lane, clearing it out so that Haji needs to help out, and because of that Omega comes in, yeah, beautiful setup, beautiful setup, now they just need to disengage, if Ito Max, or if Eto Max, or Chaknu falls, it's fine, it's worth it, it was a trade that they were willing to go for, they don't even die, so, wow, good play by Renzio, yeah, he did, he did. very good play, very good play. He knows that if he just goes for that cut against the Paquito, Paquito can clear the waves faster. If, well, technically Dyroth can clear the wave faster, but he needs to use that Abyssum Strike, and it's on. It's a, an ability that you need to have in these team fights, right? So he didn't use that, but he doesn't want to do that. Instead of just going for the cut battle, he goes to the mid lane, clearing it out, applying some pressure, putting some pressure into that mid lane, so that Edward needs to rotate, and Haji too, to clear it faster. Because Haji and Edward are there in the mid lane, and they're halted from going to the turtle side, Chaknu can actually just bully or zone wise away, and then they get a free turtle. Good setup. Very good setup. Very good setup. Insane setup. By Omega. Still, though, how do they win this game? They're behind with this comp. Yeah, they're losing all the turrets, too, now. I'm sensing another long game. Sky Garden Helmet by Wise. Now Renzio goes for the cut, because there's no objectives in play, right? So it's fine if he doesn't clear as fast as Paquito. Now. But you can see, right? Paquito clears it way faster. They're gonna be grouping up 24 seconds before yeah. the board. Blacklist are really grouping up, but uh, but Omega are gonna group up too. Like no. They're not, they're not gonna go for like split push down below. Oh Oheb? Oheb, Oheb, Oheb? Camera, camera, Oheb. I wanna see that fight. Yeah, Oheb hit it. Oh my god! Oh my god, it flew by him, the arrow. Good clear. Oh, what happened there? Nice flicker, Venus. Set up battle. Again, Kelra and Oheb. They're farming pretty well. Kelra goes mid, clearing it out. That's okay. So, gro ooh, 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 ooh. Good flicker. Good flicker. Was hunting for a Winter kill. early by Haji. Nice item. Nice pickup. But yeah, um, they're giving Kelra two waves every single time. So with the Grok Selena, if you go for a Grok Selena, usually it's just to enable your gold lane, yeah? 
it's so you enable another member of your team, basically. Because the Selena doesn't need farm, and the Grok doesn't need farm uh, as well. They only just clear waves to get pressure. So Kara has been taking a whole lot of um, gold, right? He's been soaking in a lot of gold. Funneling, they, they're funneling it in onto Kelra, and he goes back up top. He doesn't even care if the turret gets taken down. It's fine. He gets all the gold again of that top side. Slowly but surely, he's going to have a lead over Oheb. And on a 1-1, one, one, that's massive. Oheb doesn't have a win of nature yet. If he has a win of nature now, it might be... Yeah, it will be a very massive advantage. Because then all the... All the gold funneling. Oh, uh, Hachi already has a winter truncheon too, so they, they know what Omega are doing. They want Kelra to be ahead so that he can melt them down in the team fight. That's why they go for winter truncheon early. I'm very curious to see how this plays out actually. Because if they keep on doing this, the turrets are going to be sieged down by the minions slowly but surely. Like in that top side, you can see the minions, are, minions took away a whole lot of HP. Hmm. And that's what we're seeing here, right? So Lord's still gonna be bobbed and weaved around here between both teams. Yeah. And because they have a Grok, Selena, they can't really. Oh wait. Oh, good shot. This Lord should be for Blacklist. Damn, how did they make a win this one? God damn. Is this it? That is it. That is it. Oh, whoa, wait, what? Wait, he winnered? What? Oh, he was stunned! Oh, I thought that was winner! It's the Abyssal Arrow! Holy shit! What the heck? A2 Max! Wow! Oh, that's massive! That's a shutdown! And he got Venus! Oh no, and bot side Edwards low! Oh my god, that could have been... That's so good for Omega! Oh, they can convert on, on objectives all day! Mid turret down below as well! Oh, that was perfect! Oh my god, that was beautiful. That was so good. Now Venus has to buy the Winter Truncheon. Holy god. Uh, and, and Beatrix has to win a nature too. They're literally trying to deny him already, but... Oh, that so good by Itu Max. Kara popped the ult. That was really good. Like how he was able to get all the weakness points super fast onto Venus. But credit to E2 Max. He set that play up. Without that Abyssal Arrow, it would have been... It would have just been Venus. And it would have been still worth it for Blacklist International because they got the Lord. Oh my god, it's a max again. Another nah No, it's done. It's done. Omega defended. No, that's good. That's worth it. They don't even need to fight here. They got Edward and they can defend. Done. That's what they needed. They don't need to go for more. Wow. Wow. That's insane. That's crazy. Really, really crazy. Eto Max is, has been popping off the last few minutes. And why is two winner? Oh, there's a lot of count. Like, there's just, you're all spamming winners now. But remember, there's one thing about spamming winners. Uh, yeah. Um, sure, you can counter the 1 1, but if all you have winter, it gives Omega the opportunity to actually, like, pressure and um, take, better, take a better position in the team fight. Oh my god, dude. Kelra's first ability placement. Almost as good as Wish. Almost. Almost as good as Wish. <laughs> no, but again, um, that's why 1 1's so prior, right? Like, sure, you might think, dude, if you have a winner truncheon, if you have a winner, uh, if you have a winner truncheon or a win of nature, it's fine. No, it's not just about that. You still don't want that crossbow tank to pop as much as possible. Sure, you have the winner truncheon, but when the 1 1 puts or gets two weakness points, one more, you're forced to back up instantly, right? You're forced to back up or you're forced to play around the wall and that just creates space for Omega, for the other members of Omega, from the other members on Wan Wan's team to to push in that position. And it isolates like the members, right? Because they split up. They don't want to get hit by the crossbow tank even though they have a winner truncheon. Nice arrow, again. Two for one. I, I missed it. I was looking at the death timers. What happened here? Chaknu wild charges and an arrow hits onto Oheb. Just beautiful, beautiful placements. And Kelra uses the second ability. This is something that's very underrated as well. It's only, it's only. Oh! It's only something that me. I mean, uh, that wish. No way. 
Okay. It's only something that Wish and Kelra have in common or can do. We use the second ability not as a defensive item. We use it as an offensive item. We jump in and you use it to pop one of the uh, one of the weakness points. That's the fastest way you can pop the weakness point, right? One hit, first ability together so that you get the back one and then you will and then you hit again for the next one and while you're jumping to the right with the hit onto the left one you pop that um second ability that's the third one jump and boom you get it super fast one one combos kalra he's so good maybe next season he can be as good as wish right guys oh my god that was re okay nah kalra is just smurfing kalra is absolutely smurfing Oh my god, Kelra is smurfing! And the team as well. I mean, that wasn't just Kelra. The team as well, but... When I see a 1-1 one, one player, I'll just look at the 1-1. One, one. It's beautiful. They would have wanted to secure the Lord, but unfortunately, Wise with a heavy... It's a good steal. Even still got that little bit of advantage for sure because he is a tank. And then for Omega, they are really just... Oh my God. Whoever is in front of them, even Edward. But the thing is, when you pop... Both of them again, though. Back to set up. Back to set up. That is enough information for, for Black International to work I like how Omega are playing though. Like, um, they know in terms of if they just need to like clear waves and stuff. If they go and play Blacklist tempo, Blacklist um, game plan, clearing waves again, trying to siege down turrets, it's not gonna work, right? So they just they're just constantly invading with their better kill pressure, with their crazy burst damage, and they're leaving Kelra to deal with the rest. Oh oh oh! Dude, E2 Max as well is popping off. Holy sh... Oh, no, 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 no. E2... Omega are gonna win with this roster. They're gonna win MPLPH with this roster. Alright? This roster is insane. E2 Max is insane. Chaknu Kellera. Oh, my... Renzio, too. I mean, Ryzen, too. But, like, god damn, those three members are, like, popping off like crazy here, man. Every time Blacklist, like, they, they get something on the board, they're always punished because of a... Oh, God, God damn. The build. Ooh, very interesting build. Usually, um, usually people on 1-1 one -one go for the DHS, Corrosion, Scythe, Wind Talker, and then they go to Melfic Roar. But this time... 1-1 one -one went for the Scarlet Phantom. I want to take a look at the items, though. Scarlet Phantom. There's a lot of tanky members from from Blacklist International. You went for Scarlet Phantom instead of Melfic Roar still. Okay. You know why? You know why he went for the Scarlet Phantom instead of the Melfic Roar? It's because, well, this is an assumption again, maybe for me. Why why don't you go for a mat or penetration when you're against this kind of composition? Because second ability of Dyroth is um, it shreds defense, physical defense. With this, Wano can just focus on pure damage, attack speed. With that, later, when the crossbow tank hits, Dyroth just needs to use a second ability on the first person or the one that he wants to shred. And that's how they'll, that's how the penetration will come through. Wow. Yeah, I, I was questioning at first. I was like, there's a lot of tanky members. Why didn't they go for... Uh, why didn't he go for Melfic Roar? Why Scarlet Phantom? Then I looked at the roster again. I looked at the composition. Very good. Solid. Uh, I'll, I'll, let's see how it works. I'll, let's see how it works, though. Because I tried that combo once. I was on a 1-1, one -one, though. I was on Beatrix. We were up against a, a very tanky composition. I was on Beatrix. And when the Dyroth jumped in, it was DJY. Shout out as well. DJY, when he jumped in on the Dyroth onto the Akai, I was on Wesker. Flickered forward, ulted him. Gone instantly. So, that's something that I know based on gameplay, my personal experience. And I think that's what they're going for. It's so cool to see! So cool to see! Oh my god. Let's go! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ryzen, no! Oh, he buys the immortality! 
Oh my god, Ryzen! Oh my god, Ryzen! Holy shit, what the heck? What the? Yo, how's Ryzen? Oh, MVP Ryzen. DG. They don't even need to use that second ability combo I mentioned. What the heck, Ryzen? What? Omega are gonna win, bro. Omega are going to win, bro. Barangay Omega. Holy, what the heck? What the heck was that? Nah, GG. They don't even need to use all that analysis for nothing. They don't even need it. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Wow, bro. Wow. Renzi. I mean, uh, Ryzen. Oh, Ryzen. Ryzen. Ryzen, oh, what a play. What a play. If I cast for Philippines, my voice would be dead every day. That was crazy. <laughs> so cool. What What the heck did he have? What is it? What are it? What? Let me take a look. Wait, no, no, no. This is way too... Okay, let's see. After the win. What items? What items did he have? How did he get that? How did he make that work? What what items? Hello, Reptar. Again. What items? What are the items? Before this, right? The the item came up. Um, here I think. No, before this. Where was the items? Ah, here. Okay, let's take a look at the items. All right, concentrate energy. That's why. But man, that was just really good. Um, GG to Omega for a game two. Another. Crazy game. Ryzen popping off. Everyone on on Omega popping off. GG. That was just GG. Uh, that's it. Without further ado, we're going to jump over. We're going to end this one. Uh, watch game three, by the way. And if you haven't watched game one, what are you doing? Watch game one. Game one, the comeback was insane. We're, we're going to go. Peace out. Like the video. Subscribe. If you guys... Come on. We've, we've hit 18K. Let's get 20K. Let's get 20K subscribers and we'll do a giveaway. All right? Live on stream. We'll do a giveaway once we hit 20K. Let's go. Next video.